Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you this morning. We give you the praise. We thank you for the spirit of worship. That we can come boldly to your presence and be lost there. We may obtain grace and mercy to help us in the time of need. Even as you have commanded us to come boldly. And with heart full of assurance we have come boldly. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. You are God that inhabit the praises of your people. And when we come with a heart full of worship, we have access to your throne. Thank you, my Father. When we have access to your throne, we speak with you. And when we speak with you, we tell you our desire. And when we tell you our heart desire, you grant us our heart desire. And that is what we have done this morning. Glory be to your name, dear Lord. Thank you very, very much. Help us to continue to be appreciative to you for your keeping power. Some people saw last night, but this morning they were declared dead. Lord, some people voted in the last presidential election, but they didn't vote yesterday. Lord, what did we do to you? If you were to judge us by the way we treated you, many of us would have died. But you just showed us your mercy. Lord, you satisfied us with your mercy. You just punished us with your mercy. So we cannot say much than to say thank you. Thank you for our families, our wives, our husbands, our children, our parents, our relatives. Thank you, Lord. Many people today don't have fathers. Many today don't have mothers. Many don't have brother, don't have sister. It is only them alone in the world. But here we are, some of us, we still have our fathers, some of us, we still have our mothers, we still have our brothers, and we are even fighting. Some are saying, how I wish I have just one. My God, what an irony. Some are not married, and they have been praying. Some have been married, but they lost their husbands or they lost their wives. And they are looking for somebody that will, that will, that will comfort them. But there is nobody around. But some have, and they are fighting. And they are, and they are blowing one another. And they don't appreciate one another. Lord of glory, help us to be appreciative. That whatsoever we have, whosoever we are, you made it to be so. If you had withdrawn your mercy, the enemy would have rejoiced over us. But you kept your mercy. Thank you, Father. You beautify us with your grace and your glory. You gave us food. You gave us shelter. Some people are sleeping under the bridge. Some are sleeping in uncompleted building. Some are sleeping in train stations. Some are sleeping in abandoned buses. Where we have house where we can put our head. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glorious God you are. We bow before you, Lord. You are good indeed. The heaven testified about it. The earth declared that you are good. And we can see your goodness all around us. Even though from time to time we see some ugly development, but these are nothing in comparison with your goodness. So Lord, this morning together we come 
and we bow before you we say thank you thank you father thank you for our children thank you for our teenagers thank you for our youths thank you for all of them Lord I bless you for all of them I bless you for all of them what a joy what a privilege that we have such children that call upon you that we have such children that read bible that we have such children that are interested in fellowship and they are running to church and they come to fellowship and they are praying and they are reading their bible and they are opening and they are following my god what are we going to give to you there are some children that have killed their parent brought out gun and shot them used knife and butchered every member of the family god is is not existence to them they hear about him but they don't know anything called god father we thank you those of them that are still waiting what you have begun you will finish we cannot be parents that give birth to sons of belaya it's not possible lord if i bring all these children every one of them and i tie an invisible rope in their waist and i take the remaining half the end of it and i take it to heaven and i tie it in the altar of heaven if they like they should jump into hell but from hell you will we pull them out lord that is what i have done this morning all our children young and old both those that are still young those that are teenagers those that are youths and they want to go their way no problem they can wander as they want to wander but the bottom line is one half of the rope is with you so no chance for the devil we cannot be parents that give birth to sons of belial doesn't matter the stubbornness the arrogance the disobedience the lifestyle that is offensive to you right now most of the children are causing their parent heartache most of them are already caused because they have already brought shame to their parent but you will not abandon them you will rescue all of them the veil the enemy cast upon them will be flushed out and they will come back to their senses in the name of jesus and when they return to you they will return with zeal they will be much more zealous more than paul the apostle they will be champions of the gospel they will be ministers of the gospel they will pursue the devil to conclusion in the name of jesus holy spirit take over these children pursue them wherever they go pursue them holy ghost i said pursue them holy ghost i said pursue them holy ghost i said pursue them pursue them if they enter hell pursue them to hell and bring them out Thank you, my father. It's done. It's a done deal. Glory be to your name. Their heart is not in their hand. Their heart is with you. So pull it to yourself. Howsoever you want to do it. If you need to cut their leg in order to draw them back, do it. If you need to cut off one of their ears in order to bring them back, do it if you need to withdraw them from university in order to make them follow you do it if you need to make them fair in order to draw them to yourself do it if you need to make them bankrupt make them penniless no one cover will enter their hand in order to bring them back to you do it this is my prayer 
Everything is an instrument in your hand. Success is an instrument. Failure is an instrument. Thank you, my father. After all, you got the whole world in your hand. To you be the glory. I go and sit down to watch. You will bring all of them back. All of them, you will bring them back. Thank you, my father. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' name, we have prayer. Lord, one more thing we ask of you. All our children, all the children of the watchmen that the devil have scattered, wherever they are, bring them back. Trace them. Pummel them. Put hook in their nose. Put pepper in their eyes. Until you restore them back to the faith. Until you open their eyes and bring them back to the faith. Until you bring them back to their houses. Thank you, Lord. It's an answered prayer. Wherever they have strayed to, bring them back. Bring them back! In the name of Jesus! Those of them that are at the verge of pulling out, of being lost, confront them in the dream. Give them the dream that when they wake up, their legs will not be able to carry them. Thank you, Lord. And for three days, they will be crippled. And they will be shouting, God, forgive me. I am, going, I am not going in. I am, I am your son. I am your daughter. I am not going to backslide. I am not going to. God, God forbid, batting. God, forgive me. If you restore my leg, I will carry the Bible on my head. Do it. Lord, I have never asked you anything and you refuse me. So this is another one. Do it for me. And do it for us. All the wives that are lost, recover them. All the husbands that are lost, recover them. Lord, they have wandered away. They are singing the lost song in a strange land. They are singing, they are shouting Sibolet instead of Shibolet. They have, they have gotten a change of language. My God in glory, rescue all of them. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Lord, as we listen to your word this morning, speak to us in clear terms, in clear language. I bless your name, great Father, because it is a great day. To you be the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. Turn your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Let's read verses 20 to 22. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. While the earth remained seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. In chapter 22 of Genesis. Genesis 22, let's read from verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer them there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. 
Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offerings and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and they came to the place which Abraham which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from him. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and he said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice the passage we've read they are very familiar passages the first one was when or after the deluge after the flood or the deluge the the uh, when I, when uh, noah came out from the ark he made an altar built an altar and made sacrifices on, upon those altars, and God was very happy. God was very happy. God was very impressed. God was so, the thing so influenced God. The thing so excited God. And say, wow, I'm happy with this thing you have done. And because of this thing you have done, this is my decision. From now onward, so, 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 and so, 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 and so, 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 and so will be. It was out of a joyful heart. And then in this chapter 18 or so we read, chapter 22 rather, we saw God telling Abraham that he was going to, uh, telling Abraham what he was going to do. And, uh, and Abraham did exactly what he was told to do, offering up Isaac his son. And then why and then and then God intervened and, and then Abraham got the lamp, sacrificed it unto the Lord, and the Lord came again and said, Abraham, because of this thing that you have done, <laughs> Abraham, you have impressed me. Abraham, you have made me happy. Abraham, you have made me to be proud. Abraham, you have done that, which is uh, shaking my head. Let me use that word. And because of this thing that you have done, 
you did not withhold your son, your only son, whom you got after so many years of waiting. So you love me to this point. I will show you that I am also not an irresponsible God. In blessing, I, God, will bless you. In multiplying you, I, God, will multiply you. And through you and through your seed shall the whole nations of the earth be blessed. And may I inform you that that passage of the scripture is being fulfilled today. It is being fulfilled because if you look into the whole world, the whole world is enjoying the benefit of what the nation Israel has produced. So, we saw in this passage that this man, Noah, and Abraham did something. And those things they did influenced God. And because God was influenced, God did not keep quiet. Each time God is influenced, he doesn't keep quiet. He rose up, he rose up and did something. So, I am discussing a message briefly influencing God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Can we read it? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he, that he is, that is, that God is, and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So any man, any woman that want to go forward in life, that want to march forward in life, that want to experience the favors of God, the blessings of God, and grow in his or her relationship with God, must understand this fact that God is and that God is a rewarder of them that what? Not them that seek him but them that diligently. That adjective qualifies the kind of seeking. The adjective diligently, diligent qualifies the what? The verb seek that seek him. The level of the seeking. If your seeking must produce result, it has to be what? A diligent one. They that diligently seek him. And you must recognize it. And you must also remember. Remember I'm showing that if any man, woman wants to move forward, want to march forward like we've brought us in the path of marching forward. You want to experience the miraculous. You want to experience the hand of God upon your life in the spiritual, in the material, in the physical, in every aspect of your life. If you want to experience the hand of God, number one, you must believe the fact that God exists. And that he is a rewarder of them that would diligently seek him. And number three, that God, you must know it, put it at the bottom of your heart and let it become part and parcel of you. That God is not an abstract illusion. God is not an illusion. God is a personality. God is a being. And that God has feelings. Just like if somebody come to where you are now and raise his leg and hit on your leg, you will shout, hey, my leg, and remove it. It's a reflex action. You didn't plan it, but that pain made you to remove it. And the pain will run through you and you will feel it. And you will look at the person and say, what is, the, what is your problem? You, you, will res, you will react. And then instead of the person telling you, I am sorry, say, is it paining you? I don't even hit you well. 
you will become offended with that person. Am I right? Well, you tell me that you will not be offended. Me, I will be offended. You become offended because somebody purposely did that and instead of being remorseful, is is adding more in, more salt to the injury. You will you 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 are a human being. You will feel it. You will that thing will cause you offense. And I want you to know that God has feelings like that. God, you can do things that makes God to be happy. And you can do things that makes God to be sad. So God is an influenceable being. He's an influenceable being. So how do you know about that? Jesus, uh, God, told John the Baptist. In the day that Jesus Christ was baptized, Jesus came out of the water. And behold, the Spirit of God lighted upon him in the form of a dove. Am I right? Matthew chapter what? 3. And then a voice from heaven speaking, saying, This is my beloved son, in whom... Okay, he is pleased. So, he, the thing that Jesus did influenced him. So, I am pleased. He was pleased with him. So, he can be influenced. He can be pleased. He can be displeased. The generation of, uh, the, of Noah did things that made God to be sad. He was displeased with their action. They were immoral. They were wicked. And then God was displeased. And then he told them that he was going to deal with them. And then he came and actually dealt with them. Killed all of them. And then after the flood, somebody made a sacrifice and so I am happy. I won't kill them with water again. That is it. So God is an influenceable being. You can influence God. Your action, your lifestyle, your language, your attitude can influence God. So we're going to consider briefly, number one, God being an influenceable being. Number two, what happens when God, when you influence God? And then number three, activities that influences God. So, God could be influenced positively or negatively. I say it again, God can be influenced either positively or negatively. God could be influenced either positively or negatively. Let's look at some scriptures in Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1. And it came to pass when, my, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, but they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of uh, God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown, that is giants. Verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6, what happened? It repented God that he had made man on the earth. And what next? It grieved him at his heart. And that grieving, what was the response? Verse 7, and God said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and the beast and the creeping things 
and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These other people, God was not happy with them. But one man and his family, these other people influenced God negatively. But this other family influenced God word positively. And we saw the reaction. So God can be influenced. God is an influenceable being. God can be made uh, to be pleased or displeased. God can be made to release his blessing or withdraw his blessing depending on what one does. So, but the bottom line is I want you to know friends and brethren, men and women, boys and girls, everybody that come to church that God is watching us. Everything we do can influence God. He can either influence him positively and then he will react positively or he can influence him negatively and he will react negatively. When we come to the house of God and people are praising God and worshiping him and falling on the ground and lost in worship and somebody else is sitting down and sleeping. You want to tell me that God will be happy with that person? I am asking you. It's not possible. So you judge yourself, your attitude when you come to the house of God. You come to the church and people are praying and the prayer point is raised and people are calling upon God and some are kneeling down, some are standing up and they are praying with all their heart and somebody is sitting where he or she is sitting and is dozing and closing eyes and sleeping and just moping. He's complaining, my leg, my waist, my this. And then he just come and he's feeling unconcerned. And he just come and he's just moping. And he's just looking this way and he's looking that way. And he will sleep small and wake up and all that and all that. Or he's busy playing with his child. My friend, you are offensive to God. You are offending God. God is angry with such a person. You are, off, you are influencing him negatively. While he is looking at the other people who are really following and thinking of what he's going to do to them, he is looking at you with, how, what, is, what am I going to do to take away even the little one that I have given you before? God is an influenceable being. You can influence him. Come to church and you are not bothered. You don't bother about your life. You have been in this church for the past 10 years and you are not born again. Ordinary born again. No. Ordinary born again. You are not born again. Ordinary born again. If you are not born again, then are you going to work for him? You are not ordinary just to be born again. You, are, you refuse to be born again. With all the preaching you have had, you we are born in this church. Your parents gave birth to you in this church. Born Possibly even dedicated you in this church. Or they just gave birth to you not quite long. They joined this church. They brought you into this church as a boy or as a girl who was not even walking. They carried you on their back. And you have grown now. You are almost becoming a woman. Becoming a man. And yet, you are not a Christian. And you tell me that God will be happy with the person. Or the person's life is offensive to God. The person is living a sinful life. Person is living an ungodly life. Person is living a crafty life. The person is living a life that is a distraction. The person's life is a distraction to the church. It's a distraction to the ministers. It's a distraction to his parents. And you have caused your parent heartache. You have caused them sorrow. May I inform you particularly all these young people, not only the young people, including all of us that are grown up, may I inform you that your father and your mother does not need to say it will not be well with you. They don't need to you open their mouth and curse you. But if your life is 
making them to cry secretly, you are already a cursed person. Hear it. You don't bother. You are a very selfish person. Just like there are so many young people, young boys, young girls, they are selfish. Only self-centered. They don't think about any other person than themselves. They are self-centered. There is never a day, never in your life, at the age of 18, 17, 16, in your life, 18, 20, 23, 25, and you are still with your parents, there is never a day you wake up and say, Daddy, bring your cloth, let me wash them. Or, Mommy, bring your cloth, let me go and wash them. Never. Even if they ask you, help me, you will quarrel, oh, quarrel, quarrel and quarrel, verse and verse, quarrel and quarrel, and then you will carry it, chuck inside water, do hand like this, do hand like this, do hand like this, do hand like this, you carry it and dry it, and you think you will go far in this life. I am not costing the person, no, but the person has already cost himself. You are not doing anything. And you cannot help your parent. You cannot clean the house. You cannot even help to cook. Some will say they are boys. That it's cooking the duty of boys. So they write cooking for women. They write it on their forehead of women. They write, did they write it on the face of women that they are the only one that will cook? You are not going to school. You are not going to work. Your own is to be doing Yahweh. Parading the whole of Joss. From Yahweh. From a, from, from a pattern. You do Yahweh. Go for and gather. From Ferengada, you do ya will go Rukuba Road. From Rukuba Road, you do ya will go Anguan Rukuba. From Anguan Rukuba, you parade again, go Genta Adamu. From Genta Adamu, you parade, go Genta Mango. From Genta Mango, you parade, go Hoshi. From there to Tudunwada. Parading and parading. And then when you parade, become tired. You come back home. And you are waiting for your mommy. Who went to business? Who went to shop? Who went to school? Who went to wherever? And has been laboring to come back and begin to cook food for you. That is a callous person. And, you want, and I want to ask you, will your parent be happy that the child is doing like that? Is there any parent that will be happy like that? And after they finish cooking the food, they will give you. When you eat, you carry it and go and drop. Drop the plate. And you come to where he say, oh, oh, thank you. It's a, it's a cost child. You don't need to pray for that person. It's a cost child. Hear it. I am not cursing the child. I'm just telling you the reality. It's a cost child. It's already cost. Did you hear what I say? It's already cost. If you like, take it. If you like, downplay it. The end will tell. So if your parent will not be happy the way you be, you are going, then you tell me God is happy. And he will be influenced to now give you what you want. It's not possible. You are living your life and your life is offensive to God. You are living in sin. Small boy. And you are jumping up, living in immorality. Stealing. Stubbornness. Arrogance. Pride. Your mother will talk one, you talk ten. Your father will talk one, you hush him. The person is already a dead person. We are waiting for the he's already dead. We are waiting for when he will be buried. As far as heaven is concerned, he's already what? Dead. The only thing that will change his life is repentance. Real repentance and going to meet the father and fall down and lie down and be rolling on the mother and say, Mommy, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Daddy, I am sorry. And you begin to do the thing that will make them happy. Otherwise, that person has lost it in this life forever and ever. It will never be well with that child. I am a teller of truth. If you like to take it, you take it. If you don't want to take it, go ahead. And we will see the end. The same thing. So just like physical parents can be influenced, God can also be influenced. God is also an influenceable being. You live your life to please him, he will be influenced. 
As a young man, you are happy. You are, you are, you are, you are serving him. You give your life to Jesus and you are following him in righteousness. There are obstacles here and there. Pressures upon you to go and join people to sin. Pressure to compromise, to live like the world. People that don't know the truth. You say, no, this is not the way I was brought up. This, is, this way is going to create heartache for God. This way God will be crying. I, don't, I can't go this way. Then God will be nodding his head. So God is an influenceable being. So we are talking about influencing God positively. Many people that were able to influence God positively, one of them is Abraham. Abraham, on two occasions, made a positive influence on God. When he received, the first one was when he received the three visitors in the plain of Mamre, where he offered a persistent and argumentative prayer on the behalf of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God said, and after that God, the first one, he pleased God and God. That was how barrenness of so many years was broken. The other one, his relative that we are his relative, though stubborn, though disobedient, was rescued because he did that which influenced God and so on and so forth. So, then the other one was when he went to make the sacrifice at Mount Moriah. My friend, if you were God, what will you do? Somebody has waited for, somebody had, the promise was made to Abraham when he was what? 75. And Abraham had a child when he was how many years? 100 years. How many years in between? 25 solid years. 25 solid years. But Abraham, it, the promise was only made at 75. But before Abraham, God spoke to Abraham at 75 years, Abraham was already married. I hope you know it. By the time he was 75, God said, move out. And then Abraham went with who? Sarai. So it was, not, it was obviously not that year he married. So he would have been married two, three years or more before that day. So the marriage was not 25 years marriage. The marriage would have been 28, 30 or more. The marriage, the delay of 30 something years was broken. And then God now, if I will use the word, Sarah now managed and got one. One that was both her eye and her teeth. Abby, is it not so? That one is both your eye and what? <laughs> your nose, your teeth, your heart, your everything. That is the truth. That one eh, is the only thing in this world you have. Your eye, your ear, your nose, your teeth. It's just like somebody having only one teeth remaining in the mouth. That is how that one child was to Abraham, to Sarah. And there was, at the age of 99, there was no more hope of having another one. So this one that we managed to get, eh? <laughs> I can be sure that at the age of three, Sarah was still carrying Isaac at the back. So my son climbed my back and we back him. Oh, yes. At the age of four, when he play, 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 come. Like I remember one of, one child, he was the only child. At the age of three years, he was still sucking. When he run, run, play, play, come, he will carry chair, give mommy. Mommy, sit down, I want to suck. And the mommy will sit down and they will suck and then we'll go and play again. After I play, 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 we'll come back. He's already talking. Up. He's the one that will bring chair. Mommy, sit down. She was ready to continue feeding him until he was 10. If not, that the boy on his own stop. So for her, this is the only one I have. So anything, if you want to suck till 20 years. That was how it was with Sarah. And you cannot imagine this only I. Go to Abraham. You can imagine how the family took this boy. And then God came and said, carry this boy and go and offer. And Abraham didn't bet an eye. He knew that this matter should not cross the ear of the wife. By dream or by revelation, the wife must not get to hear about it. And then carry the boy. 
Where are you going with my son? As if Isaac is not Abraham's son. Abi, where are you going with my son? We are going to make sacrifice to the Lord. Please take care of him. You would have been saying that. And now inside Abraham, you say, you don't, you, this boy will not come back. And then they went. And then they got to a place. Told the servants to all remain one place. Only him and uh, the boy. And he closed his heart. Tied the boy. Put on the altar. Brought knife. My friend, if you were God, you will do the same. Say, Abraham, because of what you have done, I didn't know you loved me to this point. You have influenced me. In blessing, I will bless you. And you can see the evidence is clear. I want to tell you, there is no nation in the world that is as blessed as Israel. No nation in the world. None. From America to Europe to Japan to China, no nation is as blessed as Israel. Like I said the other day, God will help you. You will get money. You go on pilgrimage to Israel. When you go there, you will agree with me. People living in a hostile land, a land that's surrounded by hostility, the people are not hiding it. They say, we don't want you to leave. If, they, if one Israeli is killed, they will, they will be celebrating. If they manage to kill one, they will be shooting gun in the air and celebrating. We have killed one. And sending gift to one another. And sending sweet to one another. Say, let's rejoice. We have killed one of our enemies. And you know a nation came up openly. They opened and said, this Israel are not fit to live. But as long as it's concerned, he, he will wipe Israel off the face of the, of the world. I hope, you know, I, I hope you know somebody have said that. One of the president of uh, Iran. And that is the only thing that they are living for. But the more they are oppressing them, the more they are growing, waxing fat and great. For you to cross from Palestine, if you are coming from Palestine, Palestine side, and you want to enter Egypt, <laughs> it's like going to heaven. The kind of check they will check. Or if you are crossing from Egypt, maybe you went to you people that come, people that go from Israel to go to Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is not in Israel. Mount Sinai is in Egypt. You cross to go to Egypt to go to climb Mount Sinai, and then you are coming back or wherever. The vehicle will park like that road. You will follow security check. Follow. Just like if you are traveling international flight. You know, you know those rules. Those, those, those uh, immigration check. Before you get immigration, you go like this. You corner like this. You corner like this. Before you go where they will stamp your passport. That's how their own is on camera. Everybody will come down from the vehicle. You follow that road with leg. And then to search. Because... They are always struggling to strike, to enter, to kill one Israeli. But God has been protecting them because of the promise of God. Because you have all done this. Influence God. So how are you influencing God? That offering that Abraham made influenced God. Enoch like Jesus influenced God through right living. God, you can influence God through right living. The Bible talked about Enoch that Enoch walked with God. Let's read it. Genesis chapter 5. Genesis 5 verse 21. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And what was the next statement? And Enoch walked with God. After he begat Methuselah, how many years? 300 years and begat sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. 
And Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him. For 300 years. <laughs> not 300 months. 300 what? Years. He was following God. And alone. Alone. He wasn't bothered about what every other person was doing and God was influenced. How many people today are living right? These are the days of sin. How many people today are living right? Sin is everywhere. On the altar, people that are preaching are committing sin. People that are hearing the message are committing sin. People that are leaders are committing sin. People that are workers are living in sin. Sin is everywhere. I ask again, how many people are living right today? What I mean by living right is you are not living in sin. You are not making a practice of sin. How many people are living right? And, and, for, and for heaven's sake, when we talk about living right and living in sin, you know, the what we run into many people's mind is, God, 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 thank God, I'm not living in fornication, I'm not living in adultery, I'm not stealing, so I'm, I'm living right. That's okay, but that is not okay. That they're not living in fornication is wonderful. Which is very, very possible for somebody, young man, old man, young woman, old woman, to live in this world and be free from fornication. Oh, yes. So, don't tell me it is an impossible task. It is not an impossible task. From the day you were born up till you got married, you were free from fornication. Yes. Then after you got married, you remain faithful to your wife through to the day you people part ways or die, or the, uh, part ways by death. One hundred two two thousand percent possibility. It is when people don't want to be Christians, they give a lot of excuses. Hey, it is the boy that lured me. It is the girl that lured me. What? What a what what a what what an excuse. So, how many people are, are living are, 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 are free from sin and through living right, influencing God? So, it is not just fornication, adultery, stealing. No, what about other lifestyle habits? Tendencies. Like the man of God has always told us as we listen to him that every one of us came into this world with some nasty nature. Natures we inherited from our, from our forefathers, from our gene, from the tribes we came from, from the families we came from, from the kindred we came from. From the community we came from. Now, when we have repented of all the one we call big, big, big sin, those sin is sin, then this one that I does not readily see. I does not readily see pride. Somebody can be as quiet as gentle, but inside him is loaded with pride. Am I right? Yes. And he knows that he's, an arrogant, he's a proud person. He just, he looks down on other people. This is, forget about these people. Forget about these people. He will just, inside his mind, he says, forget about, forget about these people that don't go to school. If it is the people that have tribal prejudice, you don't know that tribal prejudice is a sin. Say, forget about this Indian number. And he saying he's on his way to heaven. He's a sinner. It's not free from sin. Did you hear what I said? The person is not free from sin. It's a sinner as far as God is concerned. 
the day of rapture, he will miss it. When the trumpet will sound, he cannot go. She cannot go. You are harboring pride because you are beautiful, because you are tall, and they call you tallest. And you say, <laughs> so you gave yourself the height. When they call you Oyibo, oh, it's Oyibo oh, indeed. Who be like me? Oyibo, oh, not be my fault. Oyibo, oh, now God give me. I know by him. He pay you. And the thing has entered your head. My friend, you, you, you are not living right. You are not living righteously. So when we're talking about living right, we're not just talking about those one we consider big, big sin. Check those things that I do not readily see. Your relationship. You, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are aggressive. You are authoritarian. You are self-willed. Let everybody talk. It is the one that is in your mind. No person can pin you down. My friend, you have a long way to go as far as spirituality is concerned. So, Enoch influenced God through right living. So, we can influence God today through what? Right living. Through right living. Living right. As a student, as an apprentice, as a young man that is growing up, as a young lady that is growing up, you can live right. Don't tell me cock and bull story. Doesn't matter where you find yourself. Whatever environment, in the university, in the school, wherever, you can live right. I have told you that some of us, we became born again when we were youth. And all the environment we got exposed to, we did not compromise. Yes. So you can live right. You can choose to live right. You can choose to be a child of God with testimony. So I ask you a question again. How many people here that are listening to me are actually living right? How many? And today living right. I'm following the Lord. I'm being sound. And be Christians with testimony. So that their lives can influence God. That is what God is looking for. In their character, in their disposition, in their language, in their behavior, in their attitude, in their relationship. They are endeavoring to maintain a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. Beside Noah and Solomon were able to influence God through great and unquantifiable sacrifices to God. Noah influenced God through the sacrifice he made. This is somebody who just came out from the what? From the ark. But you can see the offering he made to God. And God said, wow. Another person was, uh, was uh, who? Solomon. Solomon was to offer unto the Lord and the Bible says he offered thousands of thousands of rams and offered and offered and offered and unto God the things scattered God head pardon me to use that word to say it that way and God came and said my friend ask me whatsoever you want me to ask you want me to do for you ask me anything because of this thing you have done Kai you have, you, have, you have influenced me. I have been positively influenced by your generosity, by your giving, by your sacrificial giving. Ask me anything. Today, people are wanting God to bless them, but they are stingy. Stingy in their lives. You cannot be a stingy person and expect God to be liberal to you. The Bible says, that the liberal soul shall be what? Made fat. You know, when we talk about being liberal and not being stingy, people will say, hey, God knows I don't have. It's a lie. If you don't know how to give, when you have only 10,000, you will not know how to give when you have 10 million. Hear it. The people that are giving, it's not, it's not because they don't have challenge. It's not because they have enough. 
I, I think that should be which day, one of the days I was talking with the pastors and I was telling them, I was talking about this issue of giving, we're talking about it, and I was telling them that Dangote, does Dangote has need? I am asking you, does he have need? Plenty. Your need may just be, hi, if God help me, I just get 100,000 now and God, hmm, my problem for this life don't finish. Abi, is that the prayer of Dangote? He will, say, he will be saying, how am I going to get 500 million dollars? Abi, he's thinking is how he's going to get 500 million dollars. How he's going to get billion, 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 billion. Why me and you are crying for some 50? Some are saying if I get 50,000. Some are saying 100,000. Some are saying my, if I just put another 1 million into this my shop, I will just go and rest. I won't suffer myself again. Why are you thinking of 1, 1 million? 1 million naira. Somebody else, maybe like Dangote, is thinking of getting 1 billion dollar. That is what is disturbing his head. If you are talking of issue of Three billion naira is not a problem to him. His problem is as from five hundred billion BBP. So the people giving does not mean they don't have challenge. Does not mean that they have to surplus. And so they think they don't know what to do. No. If you cannot give when you have hundred, you cannot give when you have one thousand. It is that ability to give in the midst of want. That makes you great. That makes you a giver. That is a sacrifice these people did that influenced God. God said, Abraham, for this thing you have done in blessing, I will bless you. Sacrifice. It influenced God. Same thing with Solomon. It influenced God. And God opened the window. Say, God, I don't need anything. Just give me wisdom to rule my people. I am a young boy. I don't know much. So give me the wisdom to rule this your great people whom you have made me to be ruler over. And God said, wow. I give it to you. Wisdom that no any other person in this world will have. And on top of that, the money you didn't ask, I will give it to you. The riches you didn't ask for, I will give it to you. And every other thing that you didn't ask, I will give it to you. That was why. So that, how, what brought about that? Sacrifice. Influencing God. Influence God through giving. You can never outgive God. Never. You can never outgive to the cause of God. Never. So, key in. Be an, an individual that will influence God. God is an influenceable being. Let's influence him with our life by living right. That's the, that's the bottom line. Let's live right. When you live right, between you and your wife, you are living right. If there are misunderstandings, sort it out. Quick, quick. And continue your journey to heaven because anything can happen any day. Am I right? Don't allow matters to linger. If you have any challenge with any brother or sister, settle it. Why should you sleep over it? If you discover that you are struggling with a particular sin and you have struggled on your own to come out of it and you cannot, go for counseling so that you can be helped, so that you live right, so that you can influence God. That is it. Influencing God by living right. As business people, live right. Do your business right. You don't need to cut corners for God to prosper you. At all. You don't need to cut corners for God to prosper you. Live right. And you see God enlarging you. So we can influence God. By living right. We see Abraham. Uh, we saw Noah. He offered to the Lord and God. released the blessing. We saw the, uh, Abraham the same thing. We saw Solomon. Same thing if you read in 1 Kings chapter 3. We didn't read because of time. So... The New Testament, quite a number of people also influence, influence the Lord, influence Jesus Christ, and all that and all that.
Many of them influenced him and at the end of the day, they were blessed. You can influence God with your life, with your Christian life, life that has testimony. Young people, young brothers, young boys, teenagers, youth. What are you living your life for if not to influence God? What are you pursuing in this life? If not to please God. He said, hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment. For this is what? The whole duty of man. The conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God. The ways of the people that don't fear God, that you are copying, will lead you to destruction. Will lead you to nowhere. Fear God. Live out the life of a child of God. The Christian life. Throw away the things that offend God. You, if you keep holding to those things that offend God, you are tying yourself down. So, what happens when God is influenced? We saw what happened when God was influenced with, uh, with the Noah's offering. We saw what happened when God was influenced with Abraham's offering. He said, because you have done this, in blessing, I will bless you. When in the face of you wanting to compromise, you stand with God. God can never leave you. Positive influence on God makes for a blessing, while negative influence makes for a regret. Cain influenced God negatively. And you saw the reward. The sons of the giants in John, Genesis chapter 6 influenced God negatively and we saw the reward. It, was, it, didn't, it didn't go down well with them. Noah's positive influence through right living and preaching righteousness yielded salvation for him and for his entire family and the ungodly around him we are properly um, uh, recompensed the people that refused to follow godliness they all perished in the day God came with his reward he gave the reward for positive influence to those that qualify for it he gave the reward for negative influence for those that qualify for it those that qualify for positive influence what did he do to them he pushed them into the ark and locked the door and put the key in his breast pocket it was not Noah that locked that door. It was God that locked it and put the key in his breast pocket. Can you go to God's breast pocket and remove the key? It's not back pocket that somebody can pick pocket that can pick it. Breast pocket. If you put something in the breast pocket, it's difficult for pick, pick, pick pocket as to pick it. He locked it. He gave those wicked people death. He gave Noah and his family salvation as a reward for both positive and negative influence. The supreme prize or sacrifice of Abraham to offer Isaac the only son yielded indescribable blessing to Abraham. As we read in Genesis 22 verses 13 to 18. The worthy offering of Noah and Solomon also influenced God's blessing to their lives. So men and brethren, Let's influence God. When you influence God, God will be fighting your battles for you. He will grant you utterance. He will defend you. He will fight the enemy that have gathered against you. He will scatter them. Influence God with our lives. Let's influence God. And the enemy will be plotting, but God will keep frustrating them. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprises. Then finally, number three points. What are the activities that influence God? The things that influence men may not necessarily influence God. Those who will influence God to their lives are to walk in righteousness. I've been emphasizing on right, right living. On righteousness. Living a holy life. We are called unto holiness. We are called unto a life of righteousness. Can you say truly, truly that you are holy? We saw the people that followed the Lord. Saw the people that, that 
influence God and what happened to them. So, you want to follow the Lord, you want to live a life that is influencing to God. Live right. Live those that walk in righteousness influence God. Those that live in faith, walk in faith. No person who walk by sight can please God. The Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that God word is. And that God is a rewarder of them that word diligently. That is it. No person who walk by sight can please God. The just are to live by faith. They must walk in total obedience, in humility, and submission to God. Jesus walked in submission to God, and God came and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That is it. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. God identifies with Jesus Christ, giving the above virtues found in him, and that was why he blessed him. And it was said of him how God anointed him with oil of gladness above his fellows. So, want to be a champion, my friend, influence God positively. Do those things that will influence God. Don't be a controversial person. Don't be a controversial woman in church. Don't be a controversial man in church. Be a sound Christian and influence God with your life. None of us can hold God to ransom. What, what has any of us that you did not receive? Is that not what the Bible says? What have you that you did not receive? And if you receive it, why are you doing as though you did what? You gave it to yourself. None of us is anything without God. This is by the help of God. He said, well, I didn't pray, but God has blessed me thus far. Supposing he did not allow you to leave. Yes. I think two or three days ago, I read from the, the wall. I read from a, a, the, 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 the Facebook wall page of a brother. Something that was posted on his, on the, 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 on his, in his page. And then I read something. And that thing was, for me, that thing that was written there is insightful. Very insightful and very, has a lot of information. What did he say? He said that there are people that God has gifted in church. And uh, they think that when they leave the church, the church will collapse. God gifted them, gave them gifts, gave them blessings. And so they believe that if they are not given, if they are not treated as people that came from heaven and eventually they leave church, the church will collapse. It's a lie. He said that Satan fell from heaven and heaven has not changed. Satan was the covering cherub. Standing, covering God. God is sitting on the throne. Satan will stand here. Before he was not Satan, he was called what? Lucifer. The, the, the chief usher of heaven. He will spread his wing and his wing is so wide, he will cover the whole altar, cover the whole throne of God that the inhabitant, all the other angels cannot see God directly because the glory of God is much. His body is, is translucent. That this is, 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 is light can pass through. You can through from there see God but you have to see it through Lucifer that was how glorious he was the person you must follow, you must see before you see God but he felt that he God is taking too much that he too will start his own kingdom and he left heaven heaven is still intact <laughs> Abby oh yes 
And then uh, he, uh, he, also, he also wrote that uh, Ananias and Sapphira kept their money in the church. While others were bringing their own to support the work, Ananias and Sapphira kept their own, but the church did not go bankrupt. Did the church become bankrupt because Ananias and Sapphira kept their own? Others were selling and bringing and making their donations and making their pledge. I'm making their vows. It's every day, Pastor, go to disturb us, go to disturb us, go to disturb us. No God allow us to rest. This one on my own. I don't give anything. Now by force, come put them from my pocket now. Come chuck them from my pocket now. They are saying it in their heart. And Ananias and Sapphira did the same thing. They said, come chuck them from my pocket now. Say, so without us, this church will collapse. They did collapse. The church did not collapse. Without them, even when two of them died, the church grew more. Without their money. So he, he, now, he also wrote, if you don't serve in the house of God in humility, God will raise someone better than yourself. The, the highest privilege is to be relevant in the house of God. God is never limited. Three days ago, I read that on the brother's page. And I said, wow. And that is the truth. No person can hold God to ransom. Did you hear what I say? Do you see this church called Watchman? Eh? If tomorrow GS come up and say, I know do again, God will carry him and do what? Put by one corner. And go to the backyard and raise somebody that we have not even knew. And bring the person. And the person will so perform that you will be wondering, Eh? Because it's not the person doing it. The person doing it is what? God. That is God. So let no person feel that with, with, without me, let me see how God will do this. And it's a lie. No person can hold God to ransom. Whatever privilege we, are, we have, we have it from God. We should, with humility, make ourselves available. Praise the Lord. When you make yourself available, God will take hold of you. That is it. No person is indispensable. No person is too big and no person is too small. It is when we make ourselves available to God. So, you can influence God. There are things we can do to influence God. God is an influenceable being. So, let's live our lives to influence him. So that he can speak into our lives. Like he spoke into the life of uh, Abraham. In that day that Abraham influenced him. It's Abraham for doing this. In blessing, I will bless you. I told us a year ago, two years ago, that when the Lord, through the man of God, called me out and declared, said, you are not an ordinary man, all the things I've said. And then, when I came back, I came back to Abuja, I think I came back on a Sunday. So one of our pastors came, picked me at the airport, took me to somewhere, and then drew, I, he was to drive me to the house. He just drove me straight to the church. I said, I want to go home. He said, they said the, the youth are having program in the church, the district headquarters. So I just went there. He said, at least let me just come and say hello to them. So we drove straight to that place. And then at the end, they asked me to come and uh, say hello to them. So I came and I, and I told them that they are privileged people, that this is what I am coming in with from the man of God. And that they are the first people to be partakers of that declaration. Now, but there was a brother, one of the brothers, he was in the meeting, but he didn't see me that day. So he traveled all the way from Abuja to come and see me in Josia. And then he told me that this is why he came. That if your brother is promoted and given a position as a minister, definitely your story will change. So now that I am promoted and I am on top, that is why he came, so that I will give him his own blessing. So while he was talking, I was looking at this brother. I was looking at him. And as I was looking at him, God gave me a word for him. And then what was that word? It is this passage we read in Genesis. That because you have done this. That because you have done this. And this brother is not a small person. He's a very 
He's a wealthy brother. He has, in, uh, in fact, he has up to four, four shops building materials and full to the brim. He used to have about four or five houses in Abuja. And then, in fact, in the, day, the day he built his house in the village, he used one month. One. One month, finish everything with one month. So, now, and as, as I was talking about, after for some time now, his business has been experiencing some shaking, and I, I have been in the picture. So, he said, because you have done this, in blessing, I will bless you. And then, I told him, well, I don't have anything to tell you now, but this is what God is telling me, and this is what I tell you. Go. Blessing, God will bless you. For doing this. And he, he came that day and he left back. He said he's not sleeping, that he's going back. That that is the only reason he left Abuja and traveled for four hours to come and see me and then travel back. So, and then before you know it, God began to arrange his life. The places, his shops were scattered. Inside Lungu, 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 Lungu. God brought him back to the place where he started. And gave him a, a, a whole house. A whole building. Where he was paying just the rent. Just the rent alone is one million naira. That's where he was. That's where he got the shop there. And then. Began to go up on small. Gradually, gradually, gradually. So. Now when I was praying yesterday night. Yesterday night when I was praying. Uh, I think I slept around two or two. two there about after two. Now that night around one, as I was I was reading my Bible and uh, praying, he he flashed into my mind. So and I picked my phone at that time and I sent him a text. And I I told him that that thing that the Lord should tell you that day, I am reminding you of it again. Praise the Lord. Now you can see what the you can see influencing God. You know, the reason God picked up that young man and turned everything about him was because he doesn't joke with the things of God. In fact, at the point in time, he, he told me that he would be owing people. But if there is anything that is to be done for God, he wouldn't mind that he is still owing people. And God saw it. So what am I trying to say? My friend, when you influence God, God is an influenceable being. He reads every person's heart. He knows what you are doing just to show. You know somebody can be doing something for show. But he knows how, what you are doing. And then you have the burden, you have the pressure. And you are doing it with joy. And you are, but the circumstances around you is telling on you. But because of joy, you are doing it. And God is saying, okay, because you have what? I want to ask you, that thing that Abraham tied a son and brought out the knife, when he was laying the stick on the altar and then, when, or when the son asked him, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? You tell me that Abraham was laughing. In his heart, he was laughing. For where? And then he now got there, tied the, make the, lay the this thing, tied the son, carry him, put on the altar and went for the knife. That inside his heart he was happy. Abraham was crying. Tears of sorrow. But he said, well, I have no choice. God, I have to you first. Even though to me it's not sweet. Just like it was in the days of Jesus. You think going to the cross was sweet for him? He said, Father, can this cup be taken away from me? Please. Haba, you mean they will just kill me like that? We are told that it is only three that you tell him you will die, that we remain there. All of us that are, even if you know that you die now, 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 you will go to heaven. If the son of death come now, God's careful, and I'm going to first jump out here. Even though you know that if you die, you go to heaven, but it is not easy. The human feeling we do what? We begin to, we begin to speak. Jesus said, I beg, Father, take away this cup. But not my will. If it was sweet, will he have been praying that prayer? The Bible says he prayed until the sweat became was dropping like what? Blood. It wasn't sweet. But he was bent on doing the will of God. 
and when he succeeded and conquered his flesh and said I am willing then God said okay I will give you a name that is what above every other name in this world that when your name is mentioned every name must bow and that is the reason we don't pray in the name of God if you pray in the name of God that prayer is not going to be answered did you hear what I said if you pray, oh God, and you pray, 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 we pray through Christ, through God, our God. Amen. You didn't make any prayer. The prayer that will be answered is that you pray in the name of Jesus. And you don't pray through Christ, our Lord. You know, some people pray and say, we pray through Christ, our Lord. He didn't pray prayer. If you pray prayer and ended it with pray through Christ, our Lord, you have not prayed. Prayer should be made in the name of Jesus. That's why if you have not been into deliverance, you will not know what the name of Jesus does. If you are in deliverance, then you can understand what I'm talking about. The, what the name of Jesus does. The name has been so exalted that when it is mentioned, no demon can stand. He got that name because of what he did. God said, because of this thing you have done, you have influenced me. I give you a name, a superior name. Praise the Lord. So friends and brethren, God is an influenceable being. Let's go and influence God. Influence God by living right. For God's sake, you are a watchman. Eh? Brothers, you are what? You are not just an ordinary Christian. You are a watchman. Let's influence God with our right living, with our lives. Christian life, impeccable Christian life. Sound Christian life. Standard bearers. Watchmen sisters, for God's sake, we are watchmen. We are not like others. Let's live right. Let's influence God. Let our lives speak volume for us and God will say, because of you people, because of you, madam, I would, have, I would have turned my back upon this family but because of you I changed my mind. I am going to bring blessing into this family that there will be no room to receive it. Let if, let's influence God. Not negatively but what? Positively. If you have been influencing him negatively repent from today. And begin to influence him positively. Young brothers I don't know what you are looking at from the world there. There is nothing the world has to offer influence God as a young man as a youth so that God can use you and boost so that God will tell others say, do you see that young man that, there goes my child I am proud of him and because of him this is what I am going to do that is it young ladies don't seek to be like others they, they are dead they are miserable they are lost they are children of Belial children, daughters of Satan on their way to hell. He said, Pastor, how do you know? I know it because this is what the Bible says. He that believes not in the Son is condemned already. If you believe in the Son, there are ways you don't behave. There are things you don't do. There are acts you don't display. There are things you don't put on. When those things are found in you, it means you don't believe in him. And if you don't believe, you are already condemned. So it's not judgmental. It's what the Bible says. I'm just saying what the Bible says. So let's go and influence God so that it will be well with us. Let's rise on our feet and let us pray. God is an influenceable being. Pray to the Lord. Talk to him. Tell him, here am I. Are there areas we have been living a life that has been offensive to him? Let's repent of it all. And tell him I return today. Today from today I'll begin to live my life. In such a way that it will influence you positively. So that you can bless me like you blessed Abraham. Open your mouth and pray. Rise on your feet. Rise on your feet. Shake away the weakness. Shake away the tiredness. Shake away the, 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 the sleeping. Pray to the Lord. Tell him I come. I am going to influence you. I am going to come back with my testimony. Testimony of influencing you. How I influenced you and how you changed my story. Pray to the Lord now. Mm. 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 
Yes, Lord, we will influence you. Make up your mind that you are going to live in such a way that God will be influenced. And readily he will be fighting your battles. He will step back into that business that is, you don't understand. He will step back into your family and roll away the enemy that have ganged up, that have, that have converged to swallow you up. They cannot swallow you up if your life is pleasing to the Lord. Are you living right? Make sure you are living right. Brothers, check it. Sisters, check it. The way you are going about your marriage. Those of you that are wanting to get married, brothers, sisters. The way you are going about it, is it right? Is it godly? Is it righteous? The way you are running your business, is it godly? Is it righteous? The way you are living your life in church. The words that are coming out from your mouth. Is it righteous? Is it godly? The things you are the, the things you are telling other people about others. Is it godly? Is it righteous? Those discussions you are engaging in, is it portraying godliness? Is it portraying you as a godly man? A godly woman? Does it show you are living right or does it show you are living in sin? Practicing on godliness in church. Pray to the Lord and tell him I will influence you with my life. I will influence you with my service. I will influence you with my sacrifices. I will influence you with my involvement in your work. In the projects of the Lord, in the things of the Lord. The business of the master. In my relationship with my family. In my relationship with the brethren. In my relationship with others. Pray. Pray to the Lord. Tell him. Make up your mind. This is a responsibility to, to, to influence God positively. God is an influenceable being. He is watching everybody that is praying. He is watching our attitude. He is watching our disposition. He is gauging it. He is marking it. He is looking at all of it. Is it acceptable to him? Let the prayer not end today. Let it continue until all of us are living lives that are influencing Him. When we influence God, it will rise for us. I know you are blessed. You can come along with us at Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, Busabuji Road, every Tuesday by 5 p.m., Thursdays by 5 p.m. and Sundays by 8 a.m. For prayers, counseling, and reaching out more of God's blessings to you, call this line 0902 683 5110. You can also email us at watchmanjust at gmail.com. Come along with us and our God will do you good.